Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Bridget again, and today we are doing a more tech related video, which is going to be what's on my iPhone. First of all, I love watching videos like these. It just kind of, it's interesting to see what other people like have on their phone, not necessarily like the private things, but more like what apps they use, how they organize their phones, how, what wallpapers some of them use. I don't know, it's just really fun. So today I decided to do one myself. So my phone is the iPhone 10. I have um, an Apple silicone um, case. And this is orange, which I'm really loving right now. I used to change my case quite a bit. And um, ever since my fiance bought me uh, my first silicone case when I still had the 7 Plus, it was the longest time that I have went without changing a phone case. I had that thing for a while. It's really good. If you don't have it, it's worth checking out. It doesn't get dirty because even if it does, you can clean it. Um, and it gives you that grip on your phone because we don't want a broken screen. And I'm gonna start screen recording and I'll just put the footage right here. So my wallpaper is just a photo of me and my fiance. So fun fact, this photo was actually taken moments before he proposed to me. So that was our last picture as boyfriend and girlfriend. All right, so as you can see, I already opened my phone. Uh, I have also an orange wallpaper. I found this guy on Pinterest and I can link it down below for you guys if I can still find it. So the way I organize my phone, the first page shows you all of the apps that I normally use. I like to have everything just outright, not in like the app drawers just because I feel like I like it looks more clean in my opinion. Um, so we have the calendar, app store, that's my banking app, my settings, camera, photos, that's all super self-explanatory, notes, safari, um, google, which some people might think it's redundant. Sometimes I like going into safari because uh, I have bookmarks that I have on my Mac or on my MacBook that I can just open up on safari because of airdrop. Uh, Spotify, Time Tree. Now, Time Tree is really cool. I'm gonna open it for you guys. Um, it is a calendar which I can share with multiple people. So, for this one, this is my work calendar, work schedule, as you can see there. And I share this with my boyfriend, uh, my fiance. <laughs> So we share this calendar that way I can he can see my schedule so I input my schedule along and then his schedule he sends to me by the week through a picture so that makes it easier but for me because I have to go into an app to view my schedule it's easier to input it here. Speaking of the app for my schedule it's Dayforce right here which just allows me to log in. I'm not going to log in there is no need for you to see what's inside there. And then I have Snapchat. So we have Snapchat right here that's out of filter. Hello! Um, and then we have all of my peeps on Snapchat. So let's close that. And then Twitter, obviously, Facebook Messenger, and Facebook. On my dock, I have my most used apps, which is the phone app, email, um, my iMessage, of course, and then Instagram love myself some Instagram. It is one of my favorite social media. I don't even like Facebook that much anymore. It's nice because you get to connect to old friends, but I like Instagram way better. All right, moving on. So the second page here is where all of my <laughs> photography and video apps are. For those of you that know, really know me as well, I love photography and obviously I love video. That's why I have a YouTube channel. Um, but I have quite a bit of apps, so I'm gonna go into the film drawer. A lot of these I barely, barely use, but I use Camcorder, Hyperlapse, Boomerang, those are all Instagram um, apps. InShot, VHS Cam, and 8mm. So these apps are more like to achieve a film-like look, but yeah. I barely use those in the drawer. I just have them there 
for the odd time that I need it. My battery just died, so I don't know where I was. I think I ended at the film drawer. Alright, so again, that app drawer are just film apps that I use very rarely, but it's nice to have. Um, the next drawer is collage. Again, these are apps I barely use. If I do use anything, it's going to be the classic photo grid. Um, which I didn't even realize they changed their whole layout now. But just ever since Instagram released the, um, the collections option, people barely do collages anymore, I find. Alright, so the next one is this camera drawer. So they, these are like photography apps that I have um, but again barely use. Gudak was very big at one point I think last year. Really really cool but barely use that anymore. Analog film I like using this as well. It gives you this so this is a stock photo that they have. It gives you a very um, film looking vibe which I really like. You can adjust the lighting all that stuff so if you're interested in that check this app out foodie one of my favorite apps to use and not just for food um, let's say I use I'll use a stock photo okay I'll use this picture of my mom and then it has so many good apps or so many good filters like BAM instant I'm pretty sure this app is developed by like a Korean company as well. Um, but from the name itself, it can actually also edit really, really good food photos. Okay, let me try and do if I have a food photo here. It has different like selections or filter options. Okay, this one for a photo of a bibimbap, which I already edited, but I just want to show you like. Look at that, it's so vibrant. Bam! So if you are into food photography like myself, definitely check this app out. It's called Foodie. And then the rest, super self-explanatory. Um, it just, or photo photography apps. And this next app drawer I call Create. These are more like editing apps, which to be completely honest, I've barely used anymore. Unfold was cool at one point because it allowed me to kind of spruce up my my Instagram source. Oh, cool! Pride filters. Okay, let's close that. Um, it allowed me to spruce up my Instagram story game. So that, for example, I posted at one point. I use this still every once in a while, but it's in a drawer because. It, I don't use it daily or as often enough to be able to warrant the spot on the actual main screen. So for the apps that are outside, these are apps that I use more frequently and more regularly. So Facetune, everybody knows what Facetune is. I don't even need to explain. Uh, Snapseed, very good tool. I plan to do probably uh, how I edit my pictures video. Let me know if you'd like that down below. But I'm not gonna go into the each and every app because that's gonna take forever. Snapseed, Visco, my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite editing app. I literally edit, I would say almost all my pictures on here. If not as a standalone, but as a final step. Planoly, I really like. So this allows me to plan my feed and see if, make sure my feed doesn't get too like busy, you know what I mean? By no means am I saying that my feed is like feed goals or whatever, but I try to make it cohesive as much as I can, sorry. Habit, I'm just gonna close everything we've opened. Okay, so Planoly and then Over. Uh, I use that quite a bit to create like thumbnails and stuff. So I'm going to show you an example here where all my projects are. Hi Kelly! But yeah. Over and Color Story I really like as well. I just started using it. Um, Taylor Swift actually uses this quite a bit, especially when she was starting to tease 
her new album. She posted a lot on her Instagram using Color Story. So fun fact. Lightroom I also use very very frequently. I use this to adjust like brightness, color, and all that. Film is very new as well and I love using this app. It allows me to add um, those vintage filters to video. Um, but yeah, love this app. This one with the fish VLLO I haven't really used yet. It is a newer app that I've downloaded, but it is also um, a, a video and photo editing app, so I need to play with that more. Fonto, from the name itself, it just allows you to add texts to your picture. This is primarily useful if I do thumbnails. Um, I haven't used this quite a bit, but it is this and VLLO are two of my more recently downloaded apps, so. I'm gonna try and use that a little bit more. So the next one is Snow. I absolutely love this app. So this is basically, I always explain it as an Asian Snapchat. Here, let me pick a filter. Yeah, it's so much fun. And it's not just all like cutesy filters, it has like what the F filters as well. Like, There's really more funny ones like this. Or, ooh, brows on fleek. But yeah, super fun. If you're tired of the Snapchat filters, this is a really good and fun option as well. Google Photos, self explanatory. So my next page has more of the drawers. So a lot of the apps that are not photography and stuff, I dump into the third page. And then, same concept those that I use the least are put in or organized in drawers and those that are at least a little bit more used I put out so this work one I just have Excel YouTube studio so this app allows me to monitor like my videos how they're doing stuff like that Google Drive Word and Sephora corporate events which I needed to download during my conference last May Pro productivity I have Dropbox, Goodreads, oh, Goodreads, Reminders, YouTube, Netflix, WordPress, and MyTellus. That allows me to view my bill and such. Travel, I have Booking.com, Airbnb, Kayak, Google Translate, very important if you travel to places where they have different characters, not Roman characters, because that way you can translate even if it's not translated to a T at least you have an idea as to what what it is about. Currency, XE currency, super handy as well. I use this all the time if if I'm not lazy because sometimes I just Google. So for instance, I do, if I select Canadian dollars, if I'm in Hong Kong, a thousand Canadian dollars is 5,000 Hong Kong dollars and 38,000 Philippine pesos. So Gives me an idea. And then I have a second page, Air Miles, Dream Days, and Agoda. So these are all like just travel booking apps. Now, some of you may wonder like, that's so much work finding the app from like the first page. But actually, no. I barely even need to flip it aside from the second page. These are the two pages that I live the most. If I need anything that's not on the first and second page, I literally just like drag my screen down and then search for example YouTube and there it is. You know exactly where it is and it saves you from a couple of swipes. I don't know. It, it's efficient for me. If it doesn't work for you, you don't need to do it. And then next I have tools, Etsy, uh, Cineplex, Amazon, Remitly. This is an app that allows me to transfer money straight from my, straight from my bank um, to somebody in the Philippines and it costs very, very little. I don't know if it's available in the States. I know it's Canada only because my fiance tried to do it for like Hong Kong, but it won't work. Viber, Pinterest, Sephora, Lodo Manager, Measure, Ticketmaster, Mint, and PayPal. For games, so this is a very descriptive picture of my personality. All of my games are either like the design mark like design puzzle games 
Um, I have chess, stack, word search, and that's about it. Some of these are like not even game. Stardew Valley, it's like Harvest Moon, but improved, I guess. I don't know. Uh, fitness, straightforward. And then my food app, so open rice and open rice is only available in Asia. So whenever we're in Hong Kong, we use open rice to kind of scout locate like restaurants and stuff. Yelp, Canada doesn't really Yelp that much. I don't know about bigger cities, but where I'm from, it's not really big. Skip the dishes is dangerous. It allows, it's basically like Uber Foods if you know what that is. Um, yeah, open table, same thing. Trip advisor. Language, so I have this Japanese learning app, Busu. If I'm not mistaken, is to learn Korean. Let's open that and to find out. Because I forgot. Oh, casual learner. What? Well, I guess I'm uninstalled. Oh, wait, never mind. So you can actually do multiples. I was learning Japanese and there's all of these other languages and it does not have Korean. Um, I think Naver, Nav, Naver Dictionary is the Korean app that I got, yeah. But I don't know. I haven't had the time to actually sit down and learn the languages that I want to learn, but they're there when I need it. Now onto the apps that are out from the drawers. Activity is linked with my watch. Oh, actually I'm not gonna open that because I don't have much activity, so we'll leave that closed. Uh, my Fitness Pal, Weight Watchers, uh, Renfo is actually really cool. I'm not gonna open that because it has my weight and stuff on it, and you don't need to know that. But it's linked to my smart um, smart weighing scale. I'll pop a picture somewhere in the screen. I got it on Amazon and it actually like tracks your progress for you. So let's say you key in your stuff, you do initial, an initial weigh-in and then in a week, two weeks, you weigh in again as long as the app is open and as long as you've connected your device. It tells you if you lost weight, if you gained weight. Flow, so that's just my period tracker. Starbucks, very, very self-explanatory. Let me see how many rewards I have. Oh cool, I can claim free drink. But yes, uh, Canon Connect, that's just my Canon camera app. Carb Manager, another fitness app. And onto my last page. So these, this is the island of the forgotten. So this is where I put apps that I barely use, barely, barely even open. All right, so that ends that video. I do hope that you picked up a thing or two about organizing your, your apps and let me know if you want me to film that how do I edit video because I am really interested to do that. If you are interested to watch, let me know down below. But yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you can be notified when I post new videos. So thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye!